let's talk about cord. Yeah. Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be talking all things cord. Whether you are um, just starting out in your macrame journey or you kind of know the basics and but you don't really know the differences between all the cords uh, because it's a real minefield when you're starting out like there's three ply and single twist and braided and uh, twine and waxed and t-shirt yarn which has a whole little shelf to her own right there um and then before you know it you're just kind of crushed with all this cotton and um yeah it's, it's creativity is just zero so it can get a little bit too much so these are the three questions three questions that i'm going to hopefully answer for you today uh, number one is what type of cord do I need for my project? Number two, what thickness do I need for my piece? And three, how much cord do I need? Okay, so the three cotton cords that I'm gonna be focusing on, um, which are pretty much your staples in macrame, are three ply, single twist, and braided. There are, um, super thin uh, cords like hemp, twine or waxed, but they kind of lend themselves in the string, macrame string category, which is more like your jewellery and things like that. Um, but if jewellery is your thing, then head in that direction. Um, and also you don't want to confuse cotton cord with cotton yarn. Um, I'll tell you a bit about my, the beginning of, of my journey. Uh, so I was like super pumped and I was like, yes, I'm totally gonna create this plant hanger. I've never done macrame before. Um, saw like in the shop cotton yarn and I was like, oh my God, perfect. It was something like 20 quid. I was like, oh my God, that's really expensive. <laughs> but let's just do it. I'm gonna create something new. It's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna be super mindful and I'm just gonna win a life. Um, so yeah, so I, I nodded it and it was just turning out like really amazing. And I was like, oh my God, this is just incredible. And I put the plant pot in and it just went, uh, <laughs> and I was like, ah, and I lost like all of the design and it just looked like or massive, just pieces of string just hanging down, just trying to hold this, um, plant in place and yeah it just looked like just awful um yeah so that was the that was the time when I really learnt firsthand don't use cotton yarn <laughs> it's not strong enough <laughs> so let's start with the types of cord first up is three ply now this just means that it's three strands of cotton that are woven together. Um, it's super structured, which makes it a really great beginner cord because if you make a mistake, uh, which we often do right at the start, unknot it and then re-knot it and it will still keep its shape. So I feel, find that it's really a good staple one to begin with. Next up, we've got single twist. Uh, this is one strand that's twisted which means that it can fray really easily, but it makes these beautiful soft designs and it's exceptional for fringing. And finally, we've got braided. So the difference is that the cords are braided instead of twisted, like three ply and single twist. And this can lend itself to jewelry making, anything that's kind of useful, I think, like hammocks or um, I've used a braided in a yoga strap that I've made as well because I just feel like braided is really strong. You can't fringe braided. You can't really unravel it at all. Um, I know a lot of macrame artists that use braided for like jewelry, like really chunky necklaces um, and also like massive uh, pieces as well um, because it holds a lot of structure especially if you're doing like a geometric design braided can work really well I don't really use it in my work um, but that's you know braided is up there I'm not dissing braided 
Next up, we've got what thickness do I need for my piece? So one to two mil is usually a kind of string thickness. Um, you can get three ply cotton in a, uh, a one or a two mil, um, but you don't want to be doing any kind of large scale pieces with that thickness. It will take you forever. I've got a curtain that I did um, in my kitchen that uses two mil um, and it took me forever. Whenever I kind of thought, yeah, I'm getting somewhere. Oh my God, I'd, I'd have so many rope burns on my hands. And um, for sure, it will totally give you beautiful, intricate designs. But I'd say if you're starting out one or two mil and you've, you've got a piece in mind, one or two mil is probably not the thickness that you wanna go for. Um, three and four mil is spot on pretty much. Um, you can, it's kind of thin enough that you can hold a lot of detail. Um, so the one behind me is a four mil and you can actually make really nice big scale pieces with four mil as well. Five mil, five, six mil, some macrame artists love working large scale with five or six mil um, thickness. Um, it can make large scale pieces really fast to work for and I think that's kind of the premise of why um, fibre artists use five mil in large scale pieces because you can get to start to finish pretty quickly. Um, but I find that it can lose a little bit of detail. Last up, we've got how much cord do I need to get? So you've got your piece in mind, you know what style you like, now it's up to how much cord do I need? I reckon if you talk to any macrame artist or fibre artist, they will have a first-hand experience where they knotted this massive piece and they got to like the end and they didn't have enough cord to finish the knot. Everything was just awful. So they had to undo the whole thing and yeah, it's not good, but we've all done it. I'm sure we have all been there. Um, it can be really, really tricky finding um, how much cord that you need. So what my advice would be is plan, do a tiny bit of math and make sure that you get enough or just what you need um, to make the piece because there is nothing worse than getting right at the end. You know, you've planned for like this long piece here and then actually like it's this piece of floating cotton that kind of looks a bit like a fish and you're just like cursing the world and it's just, yeah. It's not good, it's not good. There's utter, utter cotton rage. Cotton rage, I've just, yeah, it's a new thing. As a general rule of thumb, you're going to need five times the length of your finished piece per cord. So say your project is 16, you need 16 cords for your project. And the final, uh, length that you want it is a meter long you're going to need five meters per cord so you'll need 80 meters i think that's right 80 meters um of cord <clears throat> for your final uh project and then what i do is i add an extra 30 onto that just any mistakes that might happen we run out or you've got to the end and then you cut it really wonky or it's not exactly how you wanted it then you've got that extra there um because i think what people forget is that you think like oh i don't need five meters that's huge 80 meters for the hot for this tiny little hanging like nah i don't need that at all but actually what people forget is like you're folding these bad boys in half to get them onto the a uh, piece of wood that you're knotting on, like that instantly just cuts the length in half. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit of a, a trick just to keep in the back of your head that 
actually I'm gonna need a little bit more than what I thought I needed. Once you know a little bit more about what knots uses more cord, um, then you can kind of make that judgment. Um, but yeah, as a general rule of thumb, I think I've mentioned this like three times now, so it better stick. <laughs> uh, you need five, five times, I would say, um, the length per cord for your finished piece. Cool, I hope that was really easy for you guys to follow. Uh, any questions that you have, just drop them in the comments section below. Do all that really cool stuff like like and subscribe. And take it easy, guys. <laughs>